Welcome to this end-to-end -end demonstration. We will highlight key processes in managing the life cycle of an enterprise service. The demonstration shows a critical email exchange service and its interactions with self-service, support and incident, collaboration, collaboration and change, software asset management, automation, and employee engagement. Let's start by taking a look at self-service. This morning, I sat down with a nice cup of coffee, got ready to read my email. When suddenly an error message came up on my screen, the connection to the Microsoft Exchange service is a bit unavailable. I proceeded to look for help in our service portal. Let's see. Hmm, I see in the portal that there are news about the Exchange service being upgraded. It tells me that email will be down during the upgrade. Oh, but this is until March 5th. Surely the problem I'm having now is something else. Let's see if the virtual agent can help me. Hello, Max. I can't connect to email this morning. Are you having problems connecting to the corporate exchange server? Yes. We're here to help you if you're having problems connecting to email. Please tell us about the error and if possible, send us a screenshot. Great. This is the error. Good, I'm glad Max is helping me. Oh, it looks like a solution has already been provided for my request. Let's see what Max is telling me. The exchange service is currently down. Okay, good to know it's not a problem on my machine. Let's see now how the service desk is managing this issue. I'm logged in now as an agent, looking at a dashboard of various key inboxes and service management charts. I see here a request queue and looks like a lot of people are reporting issues with email connection problems. Here's a request that came in through the virtual agent request for assistance. We can see the screenshot that was sent earlier this morning with a connection error. Our system is smart and actually has already detected the content of that screenshot, translated it into plain text. And within that, it even has identified an IP address that is linked to a specific device or server that is supporting our service. This is very important information that will be key in resolving the request. We can also see that through the creation of this via the virtual agent, a request has already been categorized, has already been associated with a specific service. In this case, it's our exchange service, which is down. And the ticket has even been assigned to the proper group. In addition, we can see that this particular request has already posted a solution back through the self-service virtual agent, letting the user know the exchange service is down. This is accomplished through automation that is part of the virtual agent definition for supporting email. In this case, we have a task plan that is checking for the availability of our current service. And in the case that it is not available, has already provided information to the user. Now, in general, the agents can find further solutions to augment what is going on in supporting this request. For example, I can see a suggestions of incidents that may already be open that are related to finding a solution and bringing the service back into availability. Here we have an incident about exchange emails not being able to be accessed. I can link that so that it's directly associated with the support request. When the incident is resolved, all users can be automatically notified. Similarly, the agent could find other related information that could help with the context of this particular request. Here's a list of changes that are affecting the exchange service. Or I could look at articles from knowledge management that can help people with other kinds of related issues, how to connect to a migrated inbox, how to deal with specific uh, unavailability errors when the service is up, etc. If some of these solutions could help the user, I could uh, link them to the request and the solution will be automatically sent back to the requester. Now, going back to the request, as I mentioned earlier, we see that a device has already been identified based on information on the error screenshot. And we can see more information about that CI 
Here we can see that it is a server that is supporting a production environment, the location of where it's at. And I can look at the impact of this particular device. Here is my impact map where I can see my server that is down, the various connections that it has all the way up to the exchange service, which of course is what the end user is unable to access at this moment. Now let's look further into this particular server. Here in my device view, I can see relevant information that has been discovered for the particular server. I know where it is located, the type of operating system that is running on it, and of course, all kinds of details about the specific hardware and the software that is installed. I can also find the discovered topology for the device and its various connected components. And very relevant to what we're working on right now are the related records showing us the processes that have been related to this particular CI. There's an incident, for example, that's already been opened to investigate the issue with Exchange. Let's look at how collaboration plays an important role in finding an effective solution. This is the incident that has been created to restore service to the Exchange service. We can see a standard workflow for managing incident management. And very important, we can see related records. These are basically all of the requests that have been submitted by different users that can't access email this morning. As these come up, they get linked to the single incident so that they can also all be notified when the service is back and running. The agent working to restore service has various things that can help them. They can find articles, changes, and other common solutions that have been used in the past to solve this kind of issue. I can also have a major incident team where specific agents, experts can be added to collaborate on this particular incident. I can then start an instant collaboration with that team. And I can do that within our environment or collaborate in a different tool. Here in Teams, I have a thread with all of the experts working on this incident, where I can start to initiate conversations to find solutions. Let's add some uh, suggestions here in our collaboration chat. Somebody has uh, posted a message. We need to generate a new license key certificate for exchange service. Use the automated new certificate change model to get this going ASAP. Back on the incident side, we can see that all the discussions related to resolving this incident are being tracked here, including those that are being posted in the Teams channel. So our suggestion to generate a new certificate has already been logged for tracking and historic reporting in our incident. All the collaboration information is therefore preserved. Let's take a look now at how configuration and change management plays a role in restoring our service. Let's proceed as, we was, as was suggested in the Teams conversation and initiate a new change to create a new certificate. I can create a new change from this particular incident. And within the change creation, I will select the create a new exchange certificate model, which basically predefines logic and automation for this kind of change. As we have used a reusable defined model for change management, my new change already has information that classifies it and assigns it to the right group. It is already associated with the specific service that we're updating. And I can proceed to do the planning. We can see that our change will undergo a standard workflow so that I can plan, execute, check if I had to remediate any issues, and finally validate, review, and close the change. I'll also have assistance in scheduling the change. My integrated change calendar can find an appropriate change window based on the amount of time that I assume will take to implement. Looks like my next available change window is this coming Monday. I can now proceed to plan and execute my change. And this can include the creation of specific workflow tasks. Some can be manual, some can be automated that take place in each of the phases of the change implementation. 
we can see that under execution, there is already an automation subflow that will generate and replace my certificate automatically. We will take a look at that in a moment. But first, I can note also that my change record gives me all the details of the involved CIs that will be affected by the implementation. I can look at the impact to understand exactly when I bring this server down, what other services in addition to Exchange might be affected. And I can look at all the related records of those things that have caused the change to need to be implemented, or if the change will have an effect or side effects that need to be recorded, those will be logged in over time. As this change will not take place in a vacuum, I have resources to let me know what else may be going on that I need to take into account. My broader change calendar can show me all of the planned changes for the exchange service, and I can investigate when they're being performed, as well as the details on each of those changes. For broader information, I can even do a global search for anything related to Exchange and find that I have changes planned, I have articles from knowledge management, I have incidents that are open, support requests that have come in from self-service portal, etc. Any record that has been logged against Exchange can be found quickly here. Let's drill into one of these existing changes to see if I can learn more before I plan my current upgrade of certificates. This is an upgrade that was done to one of the Exchange servers. I can see the exact server and the CI information that I can drill into to look at in more detail. And Change Analytics actually give me information about the success or failure as well as the risk associated with this kind of change as it was performed in the past. I can see the list of failed similar changes, as well as any successful ones, if those were available. Also in terms of planning the actual ske schedule, I can see that this particular change is going to have a maintenance breach. And I can go into scheduling to find out exactly when it is occurring now and find a new window where I can schedule this and avoid the breach. Looks like as soon as I can do it is on Monday, we'll move it over. Another very valuable tool in change management is this report of change analytics where I can look at success rates, the amount of standardization I've implemented in my change processes, as well as the automation that has been taking place. And in this case, I can also find suggestions on how I can make improvements. For example, I see that I can improve my success rate overall by making a focus improvement in changes related to the exchange service. Let's drill down into that and see that it, right now I have a 79% success rate in performing changes to this service. You can also see that I've only been automating about 50% of them, yet I can have a higher success rate if I implement further automation. I can also improve the number of hours that my changes will take in implementation by performing automation. And the analytics even give me a suggestion for the type of change when those patch updates, for example, that would benefit from automation in having an impact in my overall success rate and time to implementation. Before we proceed with implementing the change, let's take a look at how software asset management can also play a role in supporting our service. Our change will produce a new certificate, but it looks like it requires us to provide an exchange license key according to model requirements. I will navigate to my software asset management menu to find out the details that I'm looking for. Within the software asset management homepage, I can see reports related to the current compliance that I have across my portfolio of software applications. In a further drill down, I can look at details at specific software titles. And in fact, I see that the Exchange server itself happens to be non-compliant right now in terms of its license consumption. Now, as we drill down into the details of my Exchange server software asset, I can see very important information, such as the different product version lists of the versions that we are currently using. I can also see the general compatibility matrix 
uh, various versions of this software. And this is all used for the discovery process to understand what licenses we have versus the actual consumption based on installations. I can, of course, look at the specific locations where these licenses are being installed and used. And most important, for implementing our change, I need to find details about the licenses and obtain the key that I need in order to generate the new certificate. Now let's take a look at this license. Here I have the specific details related to the purchase of licenses that I've made against this product, Microsoft Exchange. I can look at how many rights I have purchased, and I could look at other details such as the actual contract that was used to purchase these licenses. Here's a contract record where I can find related information about what was paid and the effectiveness duration of the contract, terms of conditions, and also whether this is related to other contracts that I may have with the vendor for supporting other infrastructure. In this case, I can see that this particular contract covers me for Exchange and also for Microsoft Project. And now looking back at my license record, I can see that all the relevant license keys are stored here and are ready for me to use. With the license key at hand, let's now move on to automation and see how this can truly help in the process of implementing our change. I will input the required information here in my change now that I've obtained my license key and proceed to execute the change. And this is a standard pre-planned and automated change. I can see that I was granted automatic approval. Now I can go to my plan and execution tab and change, and I can see that under the execution phase, a new automation task to generate and replace the certificate has been initiated. Let's take a look at the automation. The change executes this runbook automation, which will generate a certificate, stop our exchange service, delete the current certificate, and move on to import the new certificate, restart the service, and if all goes well, we'll be back successfully with a running service. Now, I'm sure all this is very interesting, but let's not forget about that email I wanted to look at this morning and get back to that core issue and look at employee engagement. Good news is that I've made myself a new cup of coffee and my email is connected and working again. I received a notification on my mobile device letting me know that my issue has been resolved and was given details that the Exchange service is back online. Let us know if you encounter any other problems. Great, I'll accept this. In fact, a new email was back because one of the first messages I received was a survey notification for my IT team, letting me know that the ticket was resolved and wanting to know my opinion. What do you think? I think IT rocks. I'm gonna fill out the survey, let IT know that it was very helpful to know the issue was not on my machine and that they would resolve it rather quickly. And I will definitely uh, come back to this channel if it ever occurs to me again. Hi, Marks. Now, employee engagement and feedback is always very useful and important to IT. And we can see here the actual survey that generated those questions that were just answered. One very useful tool is a hot topic report that looks at the different comments coming back from survey responses the trends of what is in people's minds. We can see that a lot of comments here have to, do, have to do with fast responses to the solutions, or some are actually praising or talking about the agents involved. We have some that were uh, reporting how the problem was fixed. Maybe it took too long or it was fixed through a live chat, etc. So with these reports, we can better understand where we're hitting the mark and where we can make improvements. And with this, we've come to the end of our life cycle demonstration of enterprise service management and the way a key service such as email, Microsoft Exchange can be supported by the enterprise. Thank you very much for watching.